Hallelujah, Salman Kid. Good morning, everyone. Hanun Hor, Yevortvo, Yevhopuin Serpo, Amen. In today's Gospel from St. Luke, we read, And he began telling this parable. A certain man had a fig tree which had been planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and did not find any. I have to read a supporting passage from the book of Leviticus, chapter 19. And when you enter the land and plant all kinds of trees for food, then you shall count their fruit as forbidden. Three years it shall be forbidden to you. It shall not be eaten. But in the fourth year, all its fruit shall be holy, an offering of praise to the Lord. And in the fifth year, you are to eat of its fruit, that its yield may increase for you. The vineyard owner was ready to enjoy the fruits of the fig tree. And as we understand from the book of Leviticus, it's been seven years he's been coming and he could not find any fruits. Why seven years? Because the book of Leviticus says it clearly. First three years, you cannot eat. The fourth year, everything you harvest, you offer it to the Lord because it's holy. Starting from the fifth year, you can eat. So if for three years he comes and he wants to eat, it means another four years, the, uh, the fig tree was not bearing any fruits. Seven years, that's a long time. Therefore, after not finding any food, we read in the verse 7, Behold, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree without finding any. Cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground? So the owner has the right to expect fruits in his vineyard. Symbolically, this parable seems to be teaching that the Jewish leadership has had enough time to repent of their sins and to bear fruits. But unfortunately, they did not. And we read in the Gospel of St. Luke again that St. John the Baptist tells all the Pharisees that came to him to be baptized. Therefore, bring forth fruits in keeping with repentance. The church fathers say that indeed the fig tree in this parable represents the Jewish people who look like believers and followers of God outside, much like the fig tree that had branches and green leaves but had no fruits. So the Jewish leadership especially, they looked nice, they dressed nice, they knew all the prayers, but on the inside, it was complete darkness. And Jesus when speaking these words, was addressing to these people. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you are like whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of, full of the, the bones of the dead and everything unclean. Well, we might think or feel comfortable or relieved thinking that this is addressed to the leadership back 2,000 years ago. <laughs> but believe it or not, we have the same expectations. As Christians, we are moreover expected to bear fruits as well. When we do not bear fruits, our Christianity turns into hollow practice and hollow Christianity. 
it becomes a religion without any substance. So we are to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If this fruit, by the way, the word fruit in the letter of Galatians is used in singular. If these fruit are not manifested in our lives, should we be cut down as well? Apparently, the Jewish leadership were not manifesting the fruit of the Spirit, nor the fruit of repentance. You can ask yourself, very honestly, what fruit am I bearing for the Lord? Because the fruit is not when we smile, but we hate one another. The fruit is not that we come to church dressed up and we are polite and nice to one another, but have no connection and no communion with Christ. That's not fruit. And then the next question we should ask ourselves is the fruit that we are bearing is acceptable for the Lord? Am I showing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? Here is what happened when Jesus came across a fruitless fig tree. We read in the Gospel of Matthew. Now in the morning, when he returned to the city, he became hungry. And seeing a lone fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on, on it except leaves only. And he said to it, No longer shall, shall there ever be any fruit from you. And at once the fig tree withered. So it is not enough for us to play Christianity. We have to actually live Christianity. It is not enough to know about God. We have to actually know God. There is a huge difference. We might recite Bible quotes we might know all the theology that we no, need to know. Those are all things about God. But do we actually know God? This is the question. There were many saints in the history of the church. They didn't have any kind of education. Some of them even couldn't read. But the wisdom and sanctity that they produce was infectious and it's impacting for many, many centuries, millions of faithful. Then Jesus finishes this parable with these words. And he answered and said to him, Let it alone, sir, for this year too, until I dig around it and put, put in fertilizer. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. But if not, then cut it down. This parable is teaching three simple lessons. Number one, the spiritual leaders, us, of the household of faith, and all of us, the faithful, are planted in God's vineyard. And we are expected to produce fruit. Number two, God will not tolerate fruitlessness forever. He will not. Number three, mercy and grace are extended to those who do not bear fruit. But that mercy and grace is not forever. There is time. Give me another year, sir. 
I will dig around it, put fertilizer. If it doesn't bear fruit, then cut it down. We will all have our time. We will all have our time. Therefore, we should examine our own lives and look for fruits of the Spirit, for this is how we store up fruit for eternal life. We must also realize that it is not possible to bear fruit apart from the branch, Jesus himself. For apart from him, we cannot do anything. I am the true vine, says our Lord, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Each of us is different, with different fruit of the Spirit and with different gifts. But we are all of the same body of Jesus Christ, and we are all called to use what God has given us for His glory, to bear fruit for us, for the Lord, and for others, and to further His kingdom with all the opportunities and the gifts that we are given. Amen.